Thank you for joining us for an episode of All About PR. If you're tuning in for the first time, on this podcast, we speak to experts from the field of PR and communication from across the world and bring you an interesting conversation on the subject every week. Podcasting is a growing medium and an exciting one at that for PR and communication professionals to explore and add to their campaigns. To help us understand more about it, we have with us today, Silawat Irshad, the host of the Growth Mindset podcast. In his podcast, he interviews industry leaders from across the world as they share practical tips for listeners that can help them achieve their dreams and goals in life. His podcast has also been ranked as one of the top five podcasts in India by Apple Podcast. An NLP master practitioner, he understands what it takes to produce a fabulous podcast. So let's add him on. So Isha, tell us first how you got into podcasting. Wow. So, you know, there's a science and a lot of research before I chose podcasting. Really? Uh, yeah. So before I even got into something like this podcasting space in itself, I was always looking to become a creator. I knew something that I wanted to do with my life was something wherein I could do something which could be a place to inspire people, something which would help people grow on a personal level as well as professional level and actually give practical tips that would help people become a better version of themselves. And I am somebody who's always been driven by growth, you know, Carpe Diem is the day. Right. And before I got into podcasting, I'm in this field for almost seven years, you know, reading books, attending seminars, listening to podcasts, Audible, all of these things. But then I realized that I've been a consumer all those seven years, I still remember seven years consumer. And then I'm not creating any content. And there was a very good saying by Tony Robbins. So Tony Robbins says, you know, the probability of you being a creator versus a consumer, the creator side of you has to be bigger than the consumer side. Otherwise you're not living. And that is when I decided, okay, this is something I have to work on my dream. You know, I have to, I have to find a niche, which has a potential to grow in the coming years. And then I started my research. And when I started my research, there was one pattern that I observed. Now, if you notice all the thought leaders out there in the world, be it business right. leaders, thought leaders like Gary V, Jay Shetty, or even, you know, some really influencers like, like company owner CEOs, I've seen all of these guys have a podcast. Now, why do, is it required for them to have? No, because they already have a lot of money. The, the companies are successful. They're already well-known thought leaders, but this was something which I noticed that everybody has a podcast and this is happening in the U S not in India. Right. And then I came to India. I'm like, okay, let me check the research. Let me do some research and understand how is podcasting in India. And when I researched, there were only a few people who actually had podcasts. And let me tell you, I wanted to start podcast back in 2017, 2016, 2017. But okay. then I started my podcast in 2019, two years. I was just waiting for the right moment, which I think never comes. If you're waiting, you'll always be waiting. I realized, okay, you know, the man, this is not happening. Two years I was thinking about it, thinking that I'd get better equipments. I'll get better website. Right. And then that day never came. So I was like, okay, podcasting, when I was doing my research, I came to know that this is growing at a massive rate of around 58 to 60% every year. Now, just to know for people who are listening to the podcast, India is the third largest country which consumes podcasts today. Really? First one. Yeah. First one, obviously, is the US. And then the second one is uh, China. And third is India. Now, if you compare India's population against US, we are way ahead of them, right? Which means after five or 10 years from now, if you notice 58% every single year, at the moment today, we have around 50 odd million users in India listening to podcasts out of 500 okay. million internet users that we have. So this is all statistics. So when I did my research, I came to know that after five or 10 years, this is going to be a very influential medium, like how you see YouTube, how radio podcasting right. is going to dominate this space. That's when I decided, okay, this is a very ripe market and the right time for me to get into this space. And that's when I decided last year is when I decided September that, you know, I need to take a leap and I started my podcast. Imagine if I would have started this two years ago, I would have been in some other place right now. No, but that's not a bad stint. I mean, you started last year and you were one of the top podcasters in the country right now, which I think is a commendable feat. But you know, I want to understand your Eureka moment. So when you said that, you know, you'd collected so much of information, you'd been studying so much mm -hmm. about it. What was that one moment which told you it's now or never? So when you want to know a 
when I got that Eureka moment that I have to start a podcast or the moment wherein I have to decide, you know, I have to take action on my podcast. You have to take action because I believe you were collecting information and, you know, yes. a lot of information for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you what happened. So I was working in a company and uh, I have a friend who was working there as well. So while I was talking that that guy and me, we had a very similar uh, mindset of, you know, learning and, you know, reading books. So we had a lot of similarities. So I told this guy that, you know, man, I've been thinking of starting a podcast from last two years. And my intention is to interview, you know, thought leaders like Neil Patel or Seth Godin, these kind of people interview them, understand how these guys became successful and share it to the audience, people like you and me who like listening to podcasts and, you know, grow and learn. And then he's like, how long have you been thinking? I said, two years. And then he asked, why are you not doing it? I said, no, I'm waiting for the equipment. I'm working on my website. He's like, dude, it's been two years. Are you going to stop <laughs> making excuses? Or will you actually do the work? And, right. you know, that is the moment I realized that, you know, I was deceiving myself. I was just making an excuse of equipment, not having the right time and the right opportunity. The moment he said that, it was like a truth being exposed to me. Somebody just slapped me, right? Saying, dude, you're just making excuses. <laughs> And after the next day, I decided, okay, let me do the research, find out without equipment, how can I start my podcast? So that is when I stumbled across Anchor. I did my research. And I think after, right after a week, I started off my podcast. You know, you, you always need that one person to tell you, this is it. You know, you have to start now. Exactly. Either it's a moment exactly. or it's a person. I think for you, it came in the form of a person. And we are very thankful to your friend who got you started on this journey. <laughs> I am grateful to him. Like I cannot be more, uh, you know, indebted to him. Like I feel I, whenever somebody asked me this, I gave a lot of credit to him saying, you know, man, if that guy didn't have, you know, wouldn't have told me this, I wouldn't be here in the first place. Right. So, you know, but your education was completely different from what you're doing right now. Did you not feel that pinch that, you know, you've studied for so long to be some, to be in a different profession, but here you are doing something Completely different. Okay, so you know, this is this is a typical Indian scenario here. Typical Indian parents where you know they wanted they wanted their kid to become an engineer and I was somebody like I was just following the crowd. Sorry, I hope your parents are listening to this. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so what happened was I thought, okay, let's become an engineer because a lot of my friends also wanted to become engineers. So I just took my, you know, admission in the engineering college. I did my engineering and second year engineering, I even failed in, in exams, which means you sit one year at home, right? And that was another moment, a big story, you know, wherein I got self-realization, I grew and all of that. But I chose engineering was because of this, right? Because my friends were doing. And after that one year of failure, right? When I was sitting at home, I got the realization that I don't want to sit and code for the next 20, 30, 40 years of my life. I did my research saying, you know, what do I really want to do with my life? Wherein, you know, which are the skills that I have something that would actually make sense to me. So I had realized by the end of fourth year of engineering that I don't want to sit and code. I want to go into a field wherein I'm able to talk to people, wherein I, wherein I have to interact with people on a daily basis. That is when I decided to choose sales and I was working in sales as soon as I graduated from engineering. I got a job in, uh, in a good company and I was working as a sales guy there for the last four, 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 five years now. I still have a job. I still work as a sales guy, right? But then I knew what I wanted to do. This was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to talk to people. And now the same four or five years of sales experience that I have, that is making sense right now. Because when I'm talking to people on the podcast, I understand how to talk, how to ask better questions. You know, sometimes I can even understand the tone of the voice while they're talking. All that stuff automatically came in because I was aware of the fact that, you know, I want to do this irrespective of what degree I have. That was just a phase for me, you know, that was just following the crowd. But as soon as I got my realization that this is not what I want to do, I, I decided that, you know, this I'm not going to spend the rest of my life doing something that I don't like. That's when I decided to sales and then podcasting. So this is almost like a movie script. And I do believe that, you know, fact is stranger than fiction in that sense. And yes, to do in your life prepares you for that final moment of what exactly. you meant to do. And I think speaking to people, getting them to look at a growth mindset is something, you know, that you have kind of excelled at, which is brilliant. So uh, let's, let's get Thank into you. the brand world, right? You did mention mm-hmm share a few stats with us about the potential of this market. How do you see, but how do you see it catching, you know, how do you see India catching up with the rest of the world? 
okay in my own personal experience and how i've been seeing this this podcasting industry grow in india i don't think catching up would be the right word i would say india is gonna dominate the podcasting industry in coming years and people okay. who are podcasters let's say 5 or 10 years from now and the reason is very simple it's it's all logic right because look at the numbers that we that people basically consume podcast in us the population is less but in india we are almost over a billion which is a lot of people and if you notice today what is happening is in india a lot of indians are normally listening to podcasts which are hosted by you know americans or thought leaders that are in the us or some other parts of the country and very few indian podcasters who are actually thought leaders what i personally believe in the coming 5 or 10 years the podcasters that indians have the the rise of the podcasters people who host podcast channels are going to be interviewing different leaders i personally believe these guys are going to go big in the next 5 or 10 years because the population is there the market is there right 500 active internet users which is amazing now the mm-hmm. active users in the us people who actually listen to a lot of podcasters are around 70 million these are active listeners if you notice i said india had around 50 50 million mm-hmm. and looking at the population of india versus the numbers we have it is definitely going to outnumber even china and even us you yeah, estimate on time frame there so i would say at least it would take us 5 years at least So let's get into the brand world now. A world which I believe has successfully mastered print, radio, television and digital. For them podcasting is still a very new medium. So share with us how and why should brands engage with the podcasting industry and what are the best practices that a brand should adopt while engaging with you? Yeah, so you're very right Tarunjit when you talk about uh, you know brands actually are at the moment in almost every different medium that you see television radio or newspapers they're everywhere apart from podcasting and again i want to focus on this emphasize on this that this is the case especially with india that not a lot of brands are coming forward to podcast channels and then promoting it there are a couple of reasons but if you okay. go to the us the thing is a little different in the us you know brands actually have uh, though they they talk a lot with podcast and they actually go ahead and promote that now there are different strategies okay. all of these brands are using primarily what brands normally are doing at this moment is they're trying to utilize the social media platform so how they are doing with podcasters is they reach out to podcasters like jay shetty right tell them you know that let's say this is a reebok brand or or a nike brand they will reach out to let's say jay shetty or any thought leader for that matter and tell them to promote their brand on social media not necessarily on their podcast because obviously when it comes to promoting a 30 second or 40 second short clip of promoting a brand that is something that a lot of podcasters in the US happens even right. today a lot of right. podcasts will do that if you go to let's say Tim Ferriss's podcast if you listen to their intro they will have 30 seconds to a minute or two wherein first they're going to talk about a brand that is helping them you know like this this episode is sponsored or brought to you by this so wherein these are actually paying these podcasters this is happening big time in the us that is happening in india that is not has been the case yet it's it's very 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 minimal the reason being again no companies in india are primarily focused on there and they are not yet tapped into the potential of indian space when it comes to podcasting they will definitely come they have to come because this is a space where it's quality over quantity in here so in podcasters you will not find quantity but the right quality for example let's say I am hosting a podcast which talks about health and fitness and if there is a brand which is spending let's say millions of dollars on TV advertisement and you know radio advertisement and newspapers ads they're spending a lot of money there but let's say if they had done the same kind of advertisement to a person who's hosting that podcast channel and he has a, let's say 10000 listener base this is this is very basic 10000 right. but if you are exposing and spending so much money on a television and again the conversion rate is going to be really less there because people tend to see a lot of other things there are a lot of other advertisements that are going to come on the tv right one after the other but when you come to podcasting space let's say one specific podcast that person was going to just put your company's 30 second or 40 second intro promoting your brand that mm-hmm. means you are able to get into a space wherein there are 10000 people who are actively listening to your sponsored ad right and these guys are actually the one which are interested in health right so if you have a health product if you are you know pitching it on a television not everybody is interested in health right right only a few out of million people or billion people that are watching television but if you are coming to a podcast that has 10000 people who are dedicatedly always listening to this podcast but it is stop because it talks about health and then you promote your health product on that podcast the probability of you actually selling which's going to you know increase tenfolds 
Correct. because you are you have tapped into the right target audience this Absolutely. is happening in the us but in india it's not taken that high but i think it this will have eventually happen so what i hear is you know it, it's a model tried and tested model that is already evolving in the us market and i don't see any reason why india should not adopt it tell me mm-hmm. your three top best practices that you would advise a brand to you know to follow to be able to engage with a podcaster what are your three top three brand tips so first thing as i said while we're talking you know find out the right podcast podcast channel or even a podcaster right that is very crucial because that podcast channel would give you an idea yeah. as to what kind of people listen to that podcast and if you have a product or a uh, let's say your product is is health related right and you you reaching out to a person who takes care of health related podcast it is great to you know directly go there talk to that specific podcaster and tell them you know we have this product and there are a couple of ways as to how even brands can benefit from this first is either they can you know just tell that specific podcaster saying you know since we are let's say reebok or nike let's say just for example they can say they you know we are going to give you maybe this shoes or this 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 t-shirts or maybe right. some kind of advantage something as a gift or it could be anything so you know why don't you promote just reach out to them and and ask them and see if that podcast is actually interested in doing that or not if you give them an option if you no know, because directly reaching out and saying why don't you put an ad promote us no podcaster want to do that right because they are also very if if it's if it's specially a, right. a good podcast channel when they have a good listener base and you know the the target audience are really good they would they are very 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 cautious about who they get on the podcast what kind of promotion they do on the podcast because that represents them then so if somebody reaches out to me and ask me to promote a brand or something i would think 10 times before even you know right. saying yes because i need to understand what the product is all about and then i need to understand what will it be- how will it benefit me if Correct. somebody comes to me saying it shad i'll give you 10 different t-shirts or 10 shoes and we are this product i will think about it and see if this will actually add value to me and my audience if i think this product will add value yes we can go ahead and do that so this is one way identifying uh, identifying the right podcast channel for you and then as i said second obviously is how you can benefit the podcaster and what is in stores for you like what would be the give and take how are you going to help the podcaster and how is the podcaster going to help you so i think this is the second most important i think these two are are the most crucial things and then obviously how you reach out is very important when i i get like every single day i get couple of at least minimum of 3 to 4 emails these days wow. where is somebody is trying to pitch me something either they're saying you know from this company i'm this entrepreneur i've done this i've done this can we look at an opportunity wherein you know i can get on your podcast i love when you know people spread that much love and you know they are, they are, they say that you know they like the work that i'm doing and all this sounds nice just imagine if i said yes to everybody i would my my slots would fill up for the next one year i wouldn't have time to work on anything else so it's very difficult for you know let's say if somebody is, if a podcast is already well known in space and a lot of people are reaching out to them i would say there are a few things that brands should keep in mind whenever they are reaching out to podcasters first thing is obviously you need to you need to understand how are you going to add value to this person man i mean this this is right. again going going back to the second part but i think crafting an email and saying you know at least listen to few episodes of what that podcast is all about rather than saying you know i love your podcast that is amazing because if it's amazing tell me about it right mm-hmm. you, you just can't send me a normal email and send 10 different podcasts or the same email and trust me podcasting space is in india it's it's very compact like people who are really at the top uh, are connected with each other and if you are sending the same emails to every podcaster they they are coming to know that so just make sure that you're crafting the right kind of emails so would you add another layer to this advice that could be more specific for pr professionals so for priya professionals one thing that i've noticed because see these emails that i get normally right are normally from pr professionals also so out of 3 or 4 emails I, at least two will be from pr companies or pr professionals that normally reach okay. out to me saying you know they have this specific client and this client you know they have done this 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 and they'd love to be on your podcast now i understand you're trying to pitch me something but if you're not understanding what my podcast is all about you're not getting me excited now the right. first email from a pr individual is very 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 crucial what right. i would say is the subject line going to define if that podcaster actually goes ahead and you know sees your entire is is he going to read your entire message also or not keep it very short and simple keep the subject right. line as maybe something that would appeal to me would be this person from this company has mm-hmm. achieved this would he be interested in displaying this mm-hmm. or promoting in your podcast mm-hmm. and then a few pointers in the body of the email saying first i would like them to at least know what i have done so 
I would really right. like if they know what I've been doing, the kind of people I've interviewed, what they've learned from the podcast, because that shows that these guys have really been interested. I'm more than happy to, you know, give my time to somebody who's actually done some research on my podcast and, you know, listen to a few and then tell me that from this specific podcast that I've done, they learned this. This creates right. that human touch. You know, I hear you. It is very essential to be able to create that personal connect. And we do that regularly with all media across different verticals. And I really don't see any reason why the process cannot be extended to include podcasts. And irrespective of the medium, I think it's very essential that PR pros research, customize, and tailor make their pitches to the medium at hand. And that includes podcasts. True. And let, let, me, let me add another thing. Right. How, how am I able to get world leaders on my podcast, be it Neil Patel, be it Seth Godin, I am sending them emails right. as well. Right. It is all happening through emails. So we need to understand how we can personalize this because emails will get you on the door. And again, I'm not saying just because I'm a podcaster, I'm not saying podcast, podcast, podcast. No, I'm talking because this is going to be the facts. I'm talking regarding statistics. So compare the statistics for yourself, do the research and right. you automatically see which is the rising medium in coming years. So Ishan, if a brand wants to launch its own podcast, how can they ascertain that this is the right medium for them? When should they look at launching it? And what are the key factors that they should keep in mind before launching it? So again, I'm, I'm somebody who would always recommend people to do what works for them, right? So when, right. I, when I say that, brands, I don't want brands to only focus on podcast because I'm not somebody who's going to tell, you know, just because as I said, I'm a podcaster, just come to podcasters. No. Focus on all the different mediums. Focus on television. No, focus on no, focus on my, all of these things. So yeah. my question is that if launching their own podcast or launching your own mm -hmm. podcast, the right medium for a brand to communicate, is it the right route for them? I think it is definitely. I mean, if you want to see going to television and all of these places, right? You don't have your own voice or trying to explain what your brand is all about. See, end of the day, we see logos wherever we go, right? But we don't right. know the story and we understand the power of stories. So if you have a podcast channel of your own, right, of your own brand, you can talk stories as to how your brand developed, what are you doing? And you can actually build a loyal listeners as well as customers who are going to turn, a loyal listener base who's going to turn into customers tomorrow. So starting a podcast channel, I believe for any company or any brand is very, very crucial because this will help you build that level of confidence. And right. as you said, this is another medium for you to catch more and more listeners. Now, as this age is growing, right, evolving, people are getting more and more into multitasking and people do not right. have time to sit in front of TV and watch different, different ads or things. What is going to happen in few years, people will still be multitasking. And then listening this podcast while they're driving to office or doing some other work. If you have a podcast wherein, you know, let's say a, a company podcast or a brand podcast, you're able to talk to different brands. You're going to be, let's say, talking to different individuals, different influencers, which will help you make sure that you're spending a message as well as you're also keeping your customers or listeners attached, like, like a community when right. you guys are able to talk to each other on a regular basis. And, and the right time right. I would say for starting the podcast is now just right. start when should a brand look at launching their own podcast and what is the best platform for one to host to it best time to start any podcast is today is now there is no right. tomorrow nothing I, I mean i'm i'll tell this over and over again this is very important just go ahead and start it right. the best platform best hosting platform there are a couple of ways to look at it before somebody even gets into that. You need to understand the body of podcasting, the processes in podcasting, right? Right. For you to understand how to host podcasts, there are a couple of podcasting hosting platforms. There are some that you can pay and you can host them, your, your channels, wherein you will have the authority and rights of your right. podcast channels if you pay right. them. And then there are some, which is free, wherein you don't have to pay a single penny. And hmm. those podcasting platforms would also distribute your podcast episodes to different, different platforms like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, CastBox, you know, Pocket Cast, all of these. So how important is technical know-how and voice modulation in podcasting? Uh, I think it is very, very important because end of the day, podcasting is all about audio, right? Right. So the more audio clarity you have, the more your tonality, if you can understand how to talk to people pitch of your voice because if you're too loud it'll, it'll go into the listeners ears and they'll not be able to concentrate if you're too feeble if you're too low they'll not be able to listen to what you're trying to say so you need to understand what is the right volume 
with which you need to speak and the right technicalities when i say technicalities it involves what kind of equipments you should be using in case you know you want to get some equipments how you need to edit the podcast if in case you want yourself want to do it if you want to edit the podcast what are the different you know softwares you can use to edit the podcast where you should upload right. this so do you walk the path alone or do you have a team walking it with you so i have a team when but but when i initially started i was walking all alone right, right? so first I, as i said two years just research 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 and no action and then suddenly action but after a point of time when i you know after 8 months 9 months of starting the podcast once you know it started getting that attention and a lot of people reaching out it became humanly you know impossible for me to respond to everybody because if you are receiving let's say four right. four emails or three emails on a regular basis there are sometimes you know some really interesting individuals that come in and i don't want to miss them right so what mm-hmm. i do is i have two people uh, at the moment who take care of uh, emails and taking care of my podcast editing and all that information because i have a full time job that i do i have a i'm also doing my mba i run this podcast channel and there are a lot of ton of other things that i'm trying to do why because i want to make sure wherever time i'm spending it is giving me maximum output so at the moment i do have team members so team members that is helping me manage my podcast in terms of editing it and then right. selecting the right kind of people to vet my emails like who are the right kind of people i should be interviewing yeah so when brands or pr agencies come to you for a collaboration what is the revenue conversation like do they revolve around numbers impressions listeners what does it sound like okay so that's a good question and a question that you know even a lot of podcasters also ask me today ki bhai you know can we kab kab hoga when can we start making money so i'll right. tell you one thing personally my opinion at the moment is not just to make revenue out of podcast for me yes it is a way or one of the means but right. my 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 mindset or my goal towards the podcasting space as a whole is this will be a part of what i do podcasting right. for me is just one medium like i will have a youtube channel let's say or uh, on social media handles i'm going to be all, all, all of these places but specifically podcast if somebody wants to make a revenue you need to understand that for anybody to make a revenue first thing you have to be well known in your space you need to have that kind of numbers in place wherein you know you're getting let's say if you're getting some really high profile thought leaders authors on your podcast right. means that you have a brand of yourself wherein people are coming to you they're ready to spend their time with you Right. when will this turn into a revenue there are a couple of ways you can look at it first thing as i said brands you can either you can reach out to brands or companies and tell them you know what i have this podcast uh, and these are kind of my listener base these are the kind of individuals that listen to my podcast and right. why don't you know if you are promoting it i can put a 30 30 second or a minute uh, intro before my podcast interview specific episode and then you know promote that accordingly so that you can get some revenue right this is one way second could right. be if somebody let's say if somebody a, a brand comes to a podcast channel and tells them why don't you add a 30 second or a, a one minute intro on your podcast episode and any lead that closes from it we will give you a code and anything that closes uh, from from your side we will give you an x percentage that is one way couple right. of other ways is if you already become a well known podcaster and you know you know the gimmicks of podcasting how podcasting works how you can grow your podcast then you can start your own courses on podcasting you can train other people as to how to start your podcast i do that right so we can easily find out how you can train people on podcasting how they can grow what are the gimmicks technicalities involved that is another way of earning or making revenue from podcast and there are a couple of other ways also you just have to become creative because let's say if you're if you're a podcaster and if you you are able to build your right. own personal brand people will reach out to you for example my my podcast the growth mindset i talk about what you can do on a regular basis or things or you know psychology i make psychology nlp all of these things to understand how people can improve themselves right that's that's yeah. what i do now what is happening is people are reaching out to me saying will you train me on how to develop this growth mindset can we work together can we have a one on one training session wherein i will tell you what my goals are and can we defi- decide a plan can you tell me what can i what kind of routine or rituals should i implement in my life so that i could become a better version of myself this is happening like a life coach in a exactly sense. so i understand right. the various verticals that you can look at from podcasting to be able to generate revenues for oneself true yeah multiple multiple ways to do that so coming back to revenue generation right what do mm-hmm. friends ask you typically for and i do understand you have to put in the time before you you know kind of look at minting money out of this I think this is the same rule that applies to a lot of influencers 
a lot of media as well where they get into the numbers so when brands come to you or pr agencies come to you is there let's say for a paid collaboration what is the revenue conversation like what are the numbers or impressions or the followers that they ask for and what is it that you're supposed to be saying out there okay so let's say if a brand is reaching out to a podcaster and asking them about a paid promotion i would be very upfront with first of all the podcaster has to be very upfront also saying you know see this is what my podcast is all about right this kind of right. these are the kind of people i host on my podcast these are the kind of listener base i have you can go to my linkedin or instagram or facebook profile to check out what kind of followers i have because i don't think this is very important like followers and stuff but yeah it does add to your social proof saying you know that your work is kind of been noticed by people people are noticing your work so you need to put in the pointer saying what kind of followers you have or what kind of social proof you have put that in the email and put the amount if it's paid promotion put the amount that you're going to be charging it could be let's say for 15 minute interview 20 minute 30 35 minute there are two ways to look at it either you can interview the person let's say if a brand wants to promote right. their brand using an interview all together they want to talk to the podcaster for 30 45 minutes right now that is a different now you can charge them a different amount but let's say if it's just a brand saying you know we just want a 30 second intro of our pro, of our brand on your podcast episode you can just go ahead and do that right just tell them this will be the x amount and the good part is that whenever a brand pays for a specific podcast or for an epi- episode right right that episode will be there forever as far as that podcast episode is there it's not like television where you know you'll have a specific time and a period after that it'll stop promoting right here right. it'll be ongoing till that podcast is there so it's like a a longer run and then once you identify what kind of listener base they have so you need to if a brand wants to understand what kind of podcast it is obviously they will they can just get it easily if they just go to that person's profile right let's say if you want right. to learn about the growth mindset all they have to do is just go to google find out the growth mindset go to check their website right. or go to you know apple see where, where they are all presents go to their podcasters or that podcast pages social media handles be it instagram or linkedin or or facebook and see what is happening there what kind of you know in followers or interaction is happening there what kind of content is the channel putting out that should actually give you the idea that is this the right person or not for you and then again not everybody likes to answer podcasters you know like let's say if a brand asks a question to a podcaster saying can you give us how many listener base you have can you give us statistics Right. Not all I podcasters just, like to do that. I was just coming to that. The <laughs> chip is important. Is there a way that you can tell them that you know these are the number of listeners that I have one, and these are the number of listeners who have listened to your particular episode? Is there a way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, if a podcaster has to respond in a, uh, to a brand like that, if if a brand is asking for a question like that as to how many you know listeners they have, that is a genuine question. Agreed. You can tell them. see i have 10000 listeners or even 150 500 any listeners you have just tell it whatever it is but what matters is who are the kind of people that are listening to the podcast you need to also mention that and right. kind of mention who are the people that are coming on the podcast because as i said podcast is a growing medium you may think brands may think okay maybe this guy just has let's say 1000 listeners right but you're not understanding that 1000 listeners are people who really have the money in their pockets to actually spend on things for right. example a podcaster which is into self help or into business may have only 500 listeners but these 500 listeners will be the company owners ceos mm. because that podcast which is of business they are interviewing other business leaders and the people who listen to other business leaders are business leaders themselves so that is the kind of you know image the brand needs to have in their mind whenever they are approaching the podcasters and podcasters can again i tell this like you don't have to necessarily prove what you have for example okay if somebody is ask you a question saying okay how many listeners you have and you tell them okay i have 5000 or 10000 listeners if they ask you can you give us all these data points i don't nec- i think it's personal if something if that is something you want to give you can but if you don't want to give you can tell them see dude i don't like to reveal this kind of closer because this is closer to me and what can happen is if you give this kind of data out to other brands you are putting your content out in the hands of somebody where it may go into different people's hands and you don't want you don't want that to happen you don't want your hard earned work and what kind of statistics you have to be going out to everywhere you want to keep it close right. to your heart so that you understand what is happening on a regular basis and this is something which is going to grow on a regular basis so you need to make sure that 
you tell them the answer but not necessarily you don't have to give them everything no no absolutely it's the same deal i think that applies with influencers as well why do you share statistics there are certain statistics that they would like to keep close to their heart yeah correct but uh, that's that's very valid uh, advice so we are running out of time but i'm now going to get you into a rapid fire mode your top 5 favorite podcasters i would say tim ferris gary v lewis house jocko willink at times i listen to him and okay uh, i like this another person mark metry so i interviewed him on my podcast so he is also amazing yeah awesome let's say your top 5 women podcasters okay uh, so the five favorites are happier with gretchen rubin there's another one called salam girl podcast the visionary podcast of uh, the rachel hollis podcast and by a uh, victoria garrick real pod so these are these are top few ones okay your favorite episode on the podcast growth mindset okay on my podcast i recently interviewed a person maria elin okay right uh, so we spoke about the addiction of porn and how women are stuck in this porn industry and how or what men can do to come out or you know stop this entire nonsense of addiction of porn how we can save women which are in the porn industry and all this kind of stuff which was amazing when i spoke to her so that okay. has been by far one of my most uh, interesting and favorite ones awesome five hard truths about podcasting that you wish somebody had told you before you decided to get into it <laughs> first thing is always the one which i say just start man i mean you know don't don't wait for anything second i would say this is a long race this is a marathon okay this is not a short sprint where right. you can expect results right off the bat that's not going to happen you need to put consistent effort third is obviously the consistency i would say you know you need to be consistent in your efforts because most of the podcasters are going to go blank after a few months they just drop out right. so i would say third is that fourth is you know it will take time for you to add or attract right kind of audience uh, it takes time because uh, you need to build a credibility you need to build trust so right. give yourself time because that will take time finding loyal listeners fifth one would be finding the right target audience like you need to understand who will be listening to the podcast this is very important so uh, mm-hmm. thank you much ishad for coming on our podcast all about pr lovely to have you on the show and it's always amazing talking to you we learned a lot about you know what podcasting is and how brands and pr professionals can interact with you thank you pleasure pleasure is mine tarujit and and it's amazing to always talk to you and i like the way that you guys are you know very proactive when it comes to pr and how you guys are spreading more and more awareness in terms of podcast or beat any different mediums that you talk about amazing work there thank you thank you so much so that was silavat irshad the host of the growth mindset podcast giving us a good look at the podcasting industry and insights into how brands and pr professionals can engage with the podcasting industry on a deeper level we'd also like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to the good folks at pr poi this episode was brought to you via a special collaboration with them thank you again for tuning in today and we will see you next week for another interesting conversation from the world of communication <laughs>